Hello, how are you doing? This is Johan. I'm going to uh, demo a scope and a skeleton of one and show you some areas that you want to be mindful as you go through the process to make sure that your fist is not going to get, uh, get damaged. As you see from here side by side that here what we have, you have the ports that you use the fist, but this one in particular I want you to be mindful because as you look inside these ports, you see that there are a lot of 90 degrees angles that the fist really cannot go inside those without getting damaged. So I want to just let you know, be mindful of, obviously we'll go through a process, show you what, what is inside these, but we don't want you to put your scope inside these because once you reach those 90 degree angle, you will damage your scope, your flexible scope. And also this port, the biopsy port, as you can see, here you want, again, be mindful to not go too deep because you, you could damage your fist. It's not really a straight shot. As you see, there are some angles here that can damage your fist. And when you do that, you want to really not have a huge bend on it because you could, again, have some issue with, with inside the lumen, which again, we will show you what's going on here. We're going to uh, use the fist to inspect this scope. So usually you start from one end, either the proximal or distal. Here what we have, we can start from this point and slowly advance your fist till you see some debris or what have you. As you see here, I see some areas that need some attention. Again, as I mentioned, you don't want to force it to press. Right now I, I encounter some resistance. And the reason being because, as you saw here, we have these 90 degrees angle. You don't want to force your fist to go through that 90 degree angle. You will damage it. So once you did one button area, then you go to the second one. And here again, you see there's some rust here. As you advance it, you get to a point that you cannot go any further. Again, that's because, as you saw from here, you go to this 90 degree angles and you do not want to advance it anymore. So once you're here, you go to the biopsy port. Again, as you saw from here, the biopsy port is not a straight shot. As you force it, you're going to encounter some resistance at this point. So you start going in, look at the ports, and slowly advance till you see some, so encounter some resistance here. Then you just can go force here, some rust here. You just go past this area slowly, and then now you are inside this long tube. So we want to just slowly advance and look for debris or any issue that, that you see. Here I have some areas. So that what is that? So what, where is it? I can remove it, and I say that I'm at 30 centimeter or so forth. So you just, again, advance this slowly through the length of the fizz. You want to move really at a slow pace to make sure that you don't miss any of the debris that are inside the scope. Again, at a steady pace, look, make sure that there are no debris, debris inside this. And you want to make sure that this is not bending, otherwise you would damage the fiber optic of the, your flexible inspection scope. Then you advance it. If this is bending, you just can adjust it to make sure that you're not damaging the scope. So here you are. So right now we are about at this level. So if you compare it to the skeleton of the scope, you're about here, you have that much more to go. So we do from this end, and then once we finish, we go to the distal end. Okay, again, so we, we did that, and now we had a distal end. So from the other end, we came right about here. As you see on the scope, you have the markation of 60, 70 or so. So we were probably about this point. But what we will do again, we, we go from the distal and that we slowly advance. So when you have this area, obviously you have the bending end. You want to make sure that you don't have any damage, any tears at this end. And you slowly advance again at really steady pace. Again, 
demarcation on the scope is pretty similar to this, about 10 centimeter apart. So you go in, and this scope is about 110 centimeter. So you should be able, by going from distal and, and the proximal end, to cover the whole thing. Again, make sure that this is not bending because you will damage it from this end. You can hold it if you want, you're comfortable with it, and slowly push it forward. Don't bend any of these. These are fiber optic and they get damaged. Again, really slow, go in till you finish that. You may pass this point already, but, and again, you move it really back, pay attention to your scope. If it's smooth, you will see everything a lot better than if you bend it. And coiling is not really the best thing for doing the inspection. Again, really slowly remove this. Make sure that you look at your monitor to see if you have any debris. Again, if you have, you can mark it to see what area you had issue with. Again, you want to remove it. You can place this down if you need two hands and remove it slowly to, to the other hand. So right now what we did, we did a biopsy suction channel, biopsy channel on this area. But obviously you have the rest of the scope. Again, on this end, you can use this to see if any kind of debris. You will have a lot of 90 degrees again. You don't want to go any further. Just take a look, see what it is on the various ports. Here's your air water channel. Here's your air channel, and you see there are some debris inside this, although it is away from that, but rust and debris builds up. Again, as you see here, there are a lot of 90 degrees angle that has to go through these parts, so you don't want to push it to any of the other channels. Again, as you see here, you have, uh, we show you the uh, biopsy suction port, this port, the large one, but you have other ports, you have the air airports, you have the water, and you have the auxiliary water. So those are really small. You, you cannot really use this to go in. This is about 1.9 uh, millimeter diameter, but these are, you need a scope about one mil, and some of them are even smaller. So that's the care and handling of how you make sure that your FIS, uh, FIS 5 is not getting damaged and you can use it for a long time. Pay attention to this area. You don't want to bend it too much and make sure that when you finish, you clean it and you put it aside. So here, the important part to make sure that your tip of the scope is not getting damaged. As you go inside these, you're trying to check inside that. You see that area. So if I push the scope in, I should not go in this port. That's the water port that is really has nothing to do with it. This, if you're trying to force that to that hole, you will damage it. Same as the other one. So if you come, come here, you see that at this point you encounter basically a 90 degree area. You don't want to go that far. So anytime you see an angle, 90 degree angle at this area, you don't want to really force your flexoscope inside that. This is where you get in trouble and you will damage your flexible scope. So just stay away from that. Look inside these, go inside and make sure that you, you don't have any debris or rust. But you don't want really, once you get to the end of it and you encounter some resistance, stop. The other part, part is that, same as here, you see that you have these angles and then whenever you have two different material get attached to each other, you get a lot of stoppage and resistance. You don't want to force it to or you want to just kind of go around that that bend. That way you don't have any any issues. And as I mentioned, this is a pediatric clonoscope. So you have to really know your scope. That's the important part. Know what it is, what kind of a scope you have. I'm sure there's a variation between various manufacturers, but you need to know your scope. And this is just kind of a general overview of what they could have. I'm sure the other scope, they have different bends and different curves. The whole idea with this is that when you encounter some resistance, stop. Because probably that's an issue that either you have a damaged scope 
or you have a, an area that you shouldn't be in. Because we've been receiving the scopes that they get damaged from this point. That means somebody really forced it into this area and damaged it. We get a scope that it get damaged at this end. That means what happened, either they were putting too much pressure on it or they push it too far in that they damage the fiber optic. So just make sure that as you take care of it, that if you encounter resistance, there's something going on, don't force your scope in. And make sure that you, you don't push it too far in and give it a lot of angle and curve. That way you have some breakage at this point. Just make sure you lay it straight on the flat area. And then if you need that, sometimes you may need to have, if you have a different angle, to have another person use it, but you don't want tight so much that you could damage your flexoscope.